Okay, I'd like to look at that problem that we did not get to in class on Monday. Uh, that problem had to do with um, a couple of boats, right? So let's say we've way up here, we've got um, one boat up here doing its boaty thing and another boat over here ahead of it doing its boaty thing being boats on the water, right? Um, this guy was going over with a speed V1. This guy was going over with a speed V2. Um, he was emitting a um, sonar signal at some uh, frequency F and there was a water current going the other way um, which we might call VC. So, uh, so that, that's about how we set this up before. This, is, this would be um, something we might use as a representation. Okay. Um, the reason why I like this problem is because it makes you think about okay, what exactly are the um, V1 and V2 in, or the VO and VS in the, um, in the Doppler effect equation? And it all, and it makes you think about uh, what's relative to what, and all these other very, very important ideas. These uh, um, classical relativistic ideas that are very, very important to learn now, because later on you'll be using them um, in dynamics and in um, modern physics and so forth and so on. And you'll be expected to understand this before you start understanding the more complex notions. Um, so a lot of what's going on in here in this, um, in this problem that makes it complex and difficult for students is, is actually just, um, just normal Galilean relativity and which is something that students don't pick up on as well as they probably should. Um, so before we worry about all that, I think the best thing to do is just um, sort of to figure out what we've got. Before we um, start figuring out what to do with it, let's figure out exactly what we've got. Now, I don't have um, the book with me, and so I don't know a lot of these constants, um, a lot of these numbers that are given here. I don't even know the, um, the um, speed of sound in seawater. Uh, I can only sort of give you my best recollection. Um, so let's just give it a go and hopefully everything will turn out for the best. Um, so in this case we had uh, two uh, ships uh, um, moving east. All right, so we've got these two ships moving east um, with uh, relative to some observer um, out on a pier or a quay or some other fun nautical sounding thing um, have some sort of speed. So let's say V1 is for this guy, this guy I remember is moving faster than this guy. So let's say he's moving 40 um, kilometers per hour. That's the speed of boat one. Okay. If you are in the Navy and you want to argue about boats and ships, please do so elsewhere. So we have a um, V2, which is less, let's call it 15 kilometers per hour, and that's the speed of boat two. All right, so we've got these two guys going on here. What are we going to do with them? Um, so it's a little early to say that. We want to figure out what these other guys are. So um, ship one sends out a sonar signal, sends out a signal of frequency F is equal to, let's just call it 1000 hertz, one, one kilohertz. All right, um, and they're and they're in a current okay. 
and that current has this speed VC, which is going to be equal to 10 kilometers per hour, let's say. So that's the speed of the current. Um, something we don't have up here that we're going to need is the speed of sound in seawater. Like I said, I don't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but the speed of sound in seawater was um, something on the order of uh, 5,000 um, kilometers per hour, I believe. Pretty quick. So, so I guess we've got all of these fun things here, and we ought to ask ourselves what we want to find. And we want to find um, the frequency received by boat two. Boat two, we'll call that F prime. Okay, so we've got an ID, we've got a rep. So let's let's figure out what our concept is. And that's just the Doppler effect. This is a Doppler effect problem. So we're pretty good with that. All right. And let's see, what else do we have? If we have a concept, we should be able to find our main equation. In this case, that's F prime is equal to the speed of sound minus um, the, let me see, that should be this, the receiver frequency. So the receiver is V2, but we're going to call this prime because it's not with respect to the, to some third party out here with respect to this current. Um, and so now we have, in, um, oh, let's call that plus, and call this plus as well, V1 prime. So this is uh, the sum of these things here. Um, this is the source frequency, all right? Um, or source, source speed, and that's all multiplied by the source frequency. So, all of the confusion is going to be in these two numbers, these V1 prime and V2 prime. Um, we have to figure out what they are as far as um, their magnitude and their direction. So um, what is what is the sign that comes comes here? As you as you recall from your book, um, they have all sorts of different um, conditions where they're talking about the sign and they build it up slowly and then they give you some some things here and there and the other way and all that other fun stuff. Um, so we'll just try to figure out what it is uh, by reasoning rather than worrying uh, too much about, you know, looking it up in the book and trying to figure that out, partially because I don't think the book actually is the right equation um, for what's going on here. I think you have to figure that out for yourself, really to um, get all this working out. Um, so now we've got to actually work everything out. Um, so the first thing probably is to get these magnitudes. They're actually fairly easy. We just have to say that, okay, this guy's moving this guy at some speed, but it's relative to this um, current that's in the opposite direction, right? So it's actually going faster. Right, it's going faster relative to the current than it is to some third party out here doing its, doing his own thing, making his own measurements. So we should say, okay, this V1 prime is going to be this 40 kilometers per hour plus 10 kilometers per hour, which is equal to 50 kilometers per hour. All right, and this feet V2 prime is going to be um, 15 kilometers per hour uh, plus 10 kilometers per hour, which is equal to 25 kilometers per hour. Okay. Um, now we also need to figure out what the signs are. All right. 
So to do that, let's say we've got our source here. What do the, um, what as far as the medium is concerned, what do these uh, radiating waves look like? Well, they look kind of like this, right? So as far as the source is concerned, um, this frequency is greater, right? So as far as V1 is concerned, uh, the frequency is going to have to be greater. For this, for the frequency to be greater than it is, um, this is going to have to have a negative number, right? So V1 is actually negative, all right? Um, now when, when, these, when these waves act, actually hit this guy, right? Um, they're going to be hitting as this guy moves and it's going to actually um, make make them longer right and it's this guy's going to hear something lower than if he was um, just standing still relative to the source right which means that the frequency is going to be lower and that also means that v2 prime is going to be negative so they're both negative numbers all right um, so if we use this equation, we get F prime is equal to, um, what, 5,000 kilometers per hour um, minus 25 kilometers per hour all over 5,000 kilometers per hour minus 50 kilometers per hour. Um, and that's times one kilohertz, right? Okay, so uh, the first thing we do, well, we can cancel out all of these kilometers per hour. So that they're going to disappear. And we go ahead and subtract these. So we have 4975 over um, 4950, right? Um, times 1,000. Hertz. And at, at this point, it's just plugging numbers in, right? Uh, and again, I don't really have a calculator handy, so let's see what we can do. Um, let's see. We have a 49.75, right? And we have a 49.50. And that is about um, 1.005, and then it's times a thousand hertz. So it's one one thousand and five hertz is our answer there. And and does that make sense? Well. Um, yeah, it, it does. These guys are moving. Um, these guys are sort of moving towards each other. Their, rel their relative motion, right, is they're closing in on each other, which means that this number should be greater than this number. Okay. Um, so, so that's perfectly legitimate right there. So um, for the check, um, F prime is greater than F. And um, let's see, uh, delta V is negative, which um, correspond to each other. Okay, so that's so that's one check. Um, another one is the units of F prime are one over time and the units of hertz are one over time so that checks out as well so that seems to be a fairly reasonable um a fairly reasonable answer so um i hope that clears up some of these issues that um that are here with the doppler effect um, we're not going to have any major homework on this, so 
I hope you are lo listening to this and you have tried to work this out first, right? Um, because obviously something can show up on the test and, um, you know, it might be a smaller problem, but I would really prefer to have something that tests a concept like this rather than a, uh, well, a concept like we had to do here rather than um, something that's a full-blown problem like like I've shown here. But these concepts here that go along with that go along with the equation are much more important than the equation itself. So thank you very much. Um, I'll see you on Wednesday.